Hi, my name's Mike Kanjan. I'm one of the pastors at Chapelgate, and Reverend Alder asked me to speak to what the gospel is, uh, and uh, I will do that from uh, the New Testament, even though we find uh, sort of shadows of the, the gospel in the Old Testament. Uh, it is overtly presented in the New Testament, and I'm going to springboard off of Matthew's gospel, then slow it down and take it to a little bit more specifics, and then even more slow as to it, how it pertains to you and to me. So first of all, Matthew 4, 23, and he, speaking of Jesus, went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. I'm gonna move around with you, and if you see me looking down, it's because I have cheat notes that are taped to the bottom of my phone to sort of help me here. Uh, so first of all, the word gospel, it, it's, it, it is a word in the Greek that is translated into two words, unless you say gospel, and the two words are good news. So the good news of the gospel is that uh, God has done something to bridge the gap between himself, who is, he's holy, and uh, the, uh, uh, the fallen human condition, which we are a part of. We're unholy, he's holy, and the good news is that it doesn't have to stay that way. Now, the problem is that a lot of people reduce the, the Christian faith to uh, a religion of choice. You know, you're, you're, you're not Muslim, you're not Jewish, you must be Christian, or you're not agnostic, you're not atheist, you must be Christian. And that's not what Christianity is, and that's not what believing the gospel is all about. Other people reduce it to a point in time in their lives. They say, oh yeah, I prayed this prayer when I was in fifth grade, which is when I prayed that prayer, or I was five years old, actually, or I, 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 uh, I went forward in church when I was in college or something like that, and that's the only experience they have with the faith. That isn't the gospel. No, the gospel is more than that. And I'm going to go outside with you here and let you uh, see and hear a little bit of what we have outside at our house. Um, you see the garden and the front of it. We live in a townhome and uh, across from a farm. It's really beautiful. And, and the point that I want to make with you is that in creation, God made everything to be good. In other words, when you read in Genesis 1 and God said, let there be light and God, you know, made, uh, uh, took the, the for, put the form to the universe and all these things. And he created the waters and he made the fish in the sea. Throughout the creation narrative, he says, and it was good because that's the way he made things to be. They reflect his character. God is good. Not just humankind, but the entire universe. The reason we see beauty in the trees and the spring and the fall and throughout the year, the beauty of the snow, the surf, the beach, that's what we like and we're used to. It's because that's how God made things to be. He wanted them to be gorgeous because he's a gorgeous God. He's a beautiful and awesome God. Did you know that the entire creation groans? That's what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, that the entire creation groans for its redemption. It feels the alienation between what God made the world to be and to enjoy and what the world actually is. So even the creation groans among us. And so do you actually, by the way. Every longing in your heart is more than a longing for, you know, uh, a good time after school or to be able to drive or something like that. And every sin you commit, in fact, is part of that longing for something that's missing because everything isn't right in the way it was created to be when God made the heavens and the earth and all that is, which is why I love that verse in Matthew 4. I love that verse because it not only says that Jesus was proclaiming the gospel, but also that he was, he was healing people. He was healing people with diseases and with afflictions. Matthew goes on to tell us later in his gospel that he went into every city and every village. He went into the, uh, into the synagogues. And, and so he kind of connects this message of good news that God has come to, to he, I'm back in the house, by the way, to heal, to heal uh, this chasm that exists, this separation that exists between him and his creation that kind of connects it to the world and to the illness and to all the things that we believe that sin brought into the world when Adam and Eve fell in the garden. And, 
And, and therefore, the message of the gospel is that through Jesus, healing is brought to, every, to, to, to the entire world. That is, he, the healing work of God is brought to the world, to our souls, to humanity, and to all that God has created. It's really cool. And the prophets, the way they frame it is really neat. I'm sitting in a couch now, as you can see. The way the prophets framed it is that it giving kind of a, uh, a, a vision of what would one day be. Uh, the, the prophet Isaiah talks about how lions and lambs will lie together and how children and cobras, children will put their hands over the holes of where the, the, the poisonous snakes are and leopards and young goats and bears and, 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 and cows will, will uh, be able to exist together because peace will be restored and the beauty and the goodness of the creation will be restored through the, the redemptive work of God. And that's what you long for. And that's what I long for. That's why it's not just that love is lost, that you're devastated when you break up, but you know that you're supposed to be with someone. And that's why it's sad when families fall apart. And that's why it's terrible when people die, whether it's of old age or because of injustice or COVID-19 and, and, and coronavirus and all that stuff. In other words, the gospel came to bring more than words, more than words to this religious thing, but it came to to be really where we are, and to and and to speak into the reality of what all of us always hope for, but don't know how to find in our own strength. It, it, the gospel came to end all the sad things. That's what the gospel came for. That's why Jesus came. Now, if you if you slow it down a little bit. Then, then Mark, in his gospel, talks about how when Jesus began his ministry, which is what Matthew is doing. Matthew is talking about right after Jesus' temptations in the desert, he went out and doing this. And Mark's talking about basically the same thing, but he gives us the message of the gospel, which is to repent and believe the gospel. And the word repent in the, in, in the original Greek is a word that has to do with turning around and turning from who we are saying, listen, this world is broken and I'm broken and I'm a sinner and there are things that are, are, are real about my life that, that make me feel like I'm far from God. And those who believe the gospel turn from it, they, from, from those things. It doesn't mean they become perfect. In fact, they don't. It's that they begin to believe that God actually loves them unconditionally and that because he loves them, that all the ways that and expressions they use to try to to fix that 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 which is broken from the fall in them they know it can't do it they know that that if 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 it's some kind of addiction for instance that the reason that they give into that addiction is to not feel the pain they feel inside of them that the reason that they lunge for pleasure in relationship after relationship is because they can't stand to be by themselves they feel the emptiness they feel the alienation and so when somebody repents they're really saying i've got to stop thinking that way and then to believe is to do more than feel good about god or more than you know play by the rules but it's to trust them to say i believe that you have done something that i can't do for myself and 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 that brings it brings some sense of fulfillment to all that hope and then to slow it down even more uh it, to go like into total slow motion paul in romans 3 verses 23 through 26 is, breaks it down like this he says all of us have sinned all of us have fallen short of god's glory those who believe the gospel, those who come to terms with what God has done for them through Jesus, have been justified by God's grace. In other words, God does more than bring them into the family, or maybe a better way to put it is that his bringing them into the family is the real deal. He, he brings them into the family justified by grace, that that everything they couldn't be apart from something he did on their behalf, he gives them, he makes them, he makes it theirs. And he does this 
by the, the, the big word that Paul uses in, in Romans 3 is the propitiation, the covering of our sins, the covering of how the curse has affected us by the blood of Jesus. And that this becomes ours, not by being good enough, not by being perfect, because none of us will ever be good enough. None of us will ever be perfect. None of us will ever be able to, to play by all the rules. The rules are so extensive and perfection is impossible. The second you sinned when you were a baby, it became impossible for you to ever be perfect. And it's true for all of us because we're all born with that condition. And that's okay. That's what we're born into. But what we're born again into, that's what that's a word, a term that Jesus uses when he's talking to a guy in John 3. The guy's name is Nicodemus. It's worth reading that chapter. He says you have to be born again. And when we are reborn, when we're born again, then it happens not through our good works, not through any perfections on our parts, which aren't real, not by our own righteousness, which we don't have, but through faith. In other words, through faith in Jesus, you are saved. And every longing of all of creation that makes the creation groan because of the brokenness and the alienation that exists between God and his world, it's all satisfied through Jesus. And this doesn't mean you won't sin again. You will sin again. You'll sin a lot. I sin a lot. I'm not saying that to brag and I'm not saying it to excuse myself. I'm saying that the reality is that we're sinners. But that because God didn't save you to make you perfect. God saved you to make you his. You'll get perfect at the right time. You'll be perfect when heaven and earth are one and Jesus makes everything new. But 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 God saved you to make you his. And therefore in him, you have come to terms with the good news of the gospel. And that is the gospel. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, forever hears this. I pray that uh, if they don't know you, that they will flee to you in faith and find that you have satisfied everything on their behalf through Jesus. And for those of us who do and we forget that we're saved by your grace, we're sorry. And we pray that you will be glorified in restoring us to that place, that rhythm of repentance and faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for being our students.